Mr. Murray, Dr. Murray. Cut yourself, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ferris, members, mm -hmm. thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, I'm Garrett Murray with Loyola Marymount University. I'm adjunct faculty there. Uh, you're representing FEIU and uh, providing some additional information from a worker involved in a recent campaign. Um, and not part of my prepared comments, but I'm beginning to wonder if I'm the only person in the room who uh, finds it really easy to get rid of an unwanted email with a, a single click and doesn't find it a whole lot of effort to, to actually do that. But just, just something I'm sitting here here <laughs> wondering about. Uh, but uh, this morning I discussed LMU's inclusion of field work supervisors in the bargaining unit, and I talked about how that decision I thought was problematic, not based on a clear and complete understanding of the facts, and how it resulted in limiting my ability to speak freely and openly with my colleagues about the benefits of forming a union. Um, after that hearing, the university provided the Excelsior list, which was due on a Friday. They filed it with the region electronically uh, a minute before midnight when the region was closed. This meant that the uh, union didn't get the list until Monday, and this interfered with my ability to speak with my coworkers about the union. Under the new rule, the employer would have been required to serve the Excelsior list to the union at the same time as the region, so he would have had the weekend to campaign. If the university was truly interested in encouraging us to make a good, fair decision, then I don't think they would have needed to take advantage of the current rules, manipulate the process, and keep that list from us as long as possible. They obviously knew who these field work supervisors were, and they could have supplied that information for us to also participate in the process that they had free and unabated access to while we, while we didn't. So they knew who the field uh, work supervisors were from the beginning. Um, LMU had been using work emails to send anti-union messages to employees right from the beginning, uh, even before the hearing and the petition was filed. I've given you a copy of one of the first emails that our provost sent, um, and then subsequent emails directing employees to an anti-union website, uh, ironically called Conversations, when there was uh, nothing but an anonymous comment box <laughs> to uh, uh, write comments in that may have been answered on a frequently asked questions page buried in the website, but a, a uh, um, website that uh, explicitly said, we, we urge you to vote no, uh, and presented the anti-union message. And my contention is that I couldn't contact my workers, to, uh, my, my co-workers to give them my side of this and my experiences, and that isn't fair. Uh, employees trying to form a union should have the same ability to contact our co-workers and speak to our peers by email. The university has numerous ways to contact us individual divisions, individual schools, individual departments frequently collect alternate, alternate email addresses for adjuncts that don't regularly check their university email account. Um, if the voter list at least include, uh, included phone numbers and email addresses, uh, I could have emailed them to contact them and tell them how I felt about the, the bargaining unit. Uh, adjunct faculty are often pulled in multiple directions. We either have other professional positions uh, or teach on multiple campuses. Uh, some of us come to ca uh, class, teach our classes, hold office hours, leave, and may spend uh, four to eight hours total on campus. Obviously, a lot more time in other places, uh, grading and, and uh, answering emails and those sorts of things, but our hours on campus are, are extraordinarily limited most of the time. I want to bring my colleagues together. I want to contact them. I want to create a stronger sense of community. Uh, I need to be able to do this. I don't have the resources to do that on my own. I need the support of a union and other folks. The university has worked real hard at creating a third party message. Uh, I want to tell my, my coworkers that, no, we are the union. We are the ones organizing. But I feel limited in getting that message out there. I can't do that if I can't contact my colleagues. We're still trying to cobble together accurate contact information for our unit and especially for the field work supervisors. Um, oddly enough, and I'll let you draw your own conclusions on this, one of my uh, colleagues who was against forming a union somehow or another had a complete list of every email address for every adjunct in the entire university and was able to send out his email message to everyone. And I have to wonder 
how did he get that list when we're having so many more difficulties in accomplishing that? It's not fair that the employer can bombard us with anti-union uh, messages and information uh, and emails and websites and we're stuck with a paltry list of uh, home addresses, a few phone numbers, and email addresses that we're trying to gather ourselves. I believe that I am entitled to the same access to my coworkers that my employer has, no more and no less. The proposed amendments would help me as an employee have more of a voice to speak to my coworkers about the benefits of joining a union. Thank you. Your, your employer um, during this campaign, were they uh, sending out an anti-union message via email? Absolutely. I see. Uh, uh, in the meals, it was, it was even more so in the uh, um, uh, website they developed that we were directed to by, by email, and it was in the uh, um, uh, meetings that were held by each of the, the deans, these small group meetings, uh, that were uh, coordinated and uh, publicized by email. I see. Dr. Murray, were the emails that were um, uh, issued by the university in the case that you described sent to home email addresses or um, uh, university email addresses or both? Uh, I don't have access to that list, so I don't know exactly what they're using. This is a blind email list that is the university's set of, it's a mailing list they have that if I was to try to email it, I'll get a message back saying I'm not authorized to email to that particular list. But did you receive? Uh, I received it at my university email address. There may or may not be personal email addresses in there. I, I have no way of knowing. Okay. I can't access the list. Thanks. Can you tell me, as you are you a, a, a worker, an employee involved in this campaign, um, what the impact would be on you to have your phone number and email available to the union? I, 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 I've uh, met any number of, of union organizers, and uh, I found them uh, perfectly ple pleasant folks. I, I uh, am fascinated. I may get a paper out of the, the rhetoric of kind of casting unionized or organizers as, as kind of this nefarious organization that if they, they just get one personal email address, something tragic is going to happen. I, I find them perfectly lovely folks. Uh, we'll be happy to have a conversation with them. I'm sure not everybody feels that way, uh, but I, I believe they can be dealt with the same way that we deal with telephone solicitors or other junk email that's uh, uh, pretty dominant at this point by simply deleting it and not responding. One quick follow-up, though. If it, we're talking about work email and it's actually sent um, to the employer's premises where somebody may or may not be on working time, they're going to have a tendency to at least want to open the first few emails, I assume. Well, and the, 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 the line between personal and private email, I think, is already pretty blurred, which is why uh, near Christmas Cyber Monday has such a, a big shopping thing because everybody goes back to work and, and buys stuff on their employer's internet connection. Uh, so I, I, I think that's a, a blurred line anyhow. And so, sure, somebody may open one or two and realize, okay, this is not an organization I want to hear from. I still don't think it makes it all that difficult to just click on delete. Right, but at the end of the day, that may all be occurring on working time. And so if there's 600 emails coming into the employer's email account and 600 people open up a message that's five pages long and start reading it, that's going to take some time, right? Well, and the the, the uh, emails from the university that are telling us to go to this website are occurring on work time potentially as well. Right, right. And you were getting paid for that, right? Mm -hmm. What I'm getting paid for and what I'm getting paid for in my situation is a little little unique. Okay. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, generally not, I'm generally not checking email while I'm teaching a class. I may have students that text during class and I tend to call them on that. I'm not going to do the same thing while I'm teaching a class. No, I, I understand. You Probably even you can't multitask that well. But uh, assuming, you know, you, you study communications, right? When people get emails, they tend to open them. That's a, okay. And if they're at work and they happen to get one while they're sitting at their desk during working time, they may open that when it comes in. As, as, and also from the, the uh, uh, prince who has $5 million they want to deposit in their account uh, free of charge as well, and we just delete those uh, uh, phishing emails also. Right. But you, uh, let's just talk about the and exhibits. And there's far more of those than right. there are union bets. Well, well, let's just talk about the exhibits that you handed out to us. I mean you would expect the normal person to spend more time on this material than you would on the 
I am a prince who has been disinherited <laughs> from my rightful, you know, royal largesse, and if you send me your social security number and bank account, I, we can split $10 million. Yeah, and certainly the, the, uh, these, the, these letters from our provost and then the website that is multi-pages and very complex uh, and uh, uh, an interesting rhetorical artifact on its own in terms of how it's attempting to third party the whole union right. thing. And, and uh, uh, just walk that close to the line of threatening to reduce our wages by saying, well, look, these people didn't get as good of a contract. They're, they're making less than you. Uh, without giving the whole, whole story, uh, could take up a, a, a substantial amount of time. So, so, yeah, I mean, if that's what the, the university feels is an appropriate use of her time, uh, I, I would hope I would make my, my message more, more efficient than their, theirs. But I think I deserve the same access that they have to my coworkers. Sure, and that would be an involved back and forth discussion, right? I don't know how involved it would be necessarily. There would be, need to be some discussion, yes. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you.